4, verse 16, we'll look at a few things this morning concerning uh, the Christian life in a cultural uh, misfitting age, I could say, I guess. Uh, Amish Awareness Conference has been canceled, uh, so it'll be postponed, and we'll reschedule that when they get their dates together, probably 1st of October. Uh, church services here at the church will return Wednesday night, August the 19th, 2020. And uh, for the those that are concerned, uh, the building has been professionally cleaned because of the COVID uh, pandemic thing. And so we're ready to go. We're allowed to open back up and uh, we'll be ready to go. So, and I'm here today, the church seems to be, this is Friday, so the church seems to be in great shape even as we speak. So 1 Peter chapter 4 in the Bible has a few things to say. And Peter uh, talking about living for the Lord and how to be a Christian in a culturally unfit day. And uh, the culture of today is probably uh, in its worst state uh, of, of any moral fabric that you could talk about uh, of any age as it as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it also be in the coming of the Son of Man. But let me start in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 16. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, and I guess that's kind of what I'm talking about, uh, the fact that people suffer being a Christian even today, let him not be ashamed. And people are ashamed to suffer for Christ. Uh, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So he's going to give us some instruction on how to get the glory out of our Christian life, although we may be suffering. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And I guess if we had our druthers, we would rather it not begin at the house of God, but that's where Peter says it, it begins. And if it uh, first begin at us, that's the Christian. The man that's saved, the person that's saved. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So we better thank God for the way God deals with us as his children rather than not be saved at all and never be dealt with, with by God until judgment. Verse 18 says, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear good question uh, at the judgment wherefore let him that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator father thank you for this morning thank you for the reading of your word bless now as we attempt to bring the message it's in Jesus name we pray and ask it amen now the culture of our day has no room for Christians. If you've noticed, but the world doesn't readily accept Christianity. Uh, we are a cultural uh, of many vices. Our culture has vice after vice, idolatries, pleasures, and sin. That's the norm for the world today, especially in America. And America is supposed to be a Christian nation. Christianity is accepted less and less. When you watch a national platform like a news media, uh, Christians never get an honest shake. Uh, the true Christian is shunned or looked down on uh, by society uh, or it's simply avoided completely. We have ethnic discrimination, we have sexual discrimination, uh, but no Christian discrimination. You're allowed to, in our society, in our culture, to discriminate against a Christian. That's the way it seems. But we're still supposed to be a witness to all those that do not accept us as Christians. Let me say this today. If we're to live for the Lord Jesus Christ in this age, in this culture, we have to be willing to be different. 
You say, well, what are you saying? I'm saying, well, if you're a Christian today and you want to live as a Christian, you have to be willing to be different, which simply means you'll have to be separated from some of the things in our culture and our world. Paul told the Corinthian people in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Today the biggest struggle for a man or a woman when they get saved, or a child, a young person when they get saved, is to come out of the world, is to live a separated life. And so then they struggle in their Christianity and they come to a point where they well, what's the use? I'll just go back to doing what I used to do and they end up living a miserable life. You have to be willing to be different. And God can help you with that. Uh, the Holy Ghost of God that indwells you can help you with that. So it's not that hard for a child of God to be different. And when I say that, we're different in many ways. In actions, attitude, attire, ideas, goals, and accomplishments. Uh, we're, there's a lot of pressure in the world today, especially in the United States of America, uh, to, be, to live the American dream. But as a child of God, our dreams are not here on this, this earth. Our dreams are, and our hopes and our attention and our affections are set on things above. So if we are different uh, and willing to be different and don't mind being separated from some of the ideas and things and accomplishments of the world, then this in itself is a true witness. And that's what our text was talking about, being a witness, not being ashamed. For he said, yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. You can glorify God if you'll live a separated Christian life. Uh, let me say this. Uh, Worthy of the call that God has placed upon you for salvation. When you got saved, God dealt with you and uh, wanted you saved. Worthy of the call. That simply means humility. Uh, being worthy of the call. In Acts chapter 20 verse 19, serving the Lord with all humility of mind and with many tears and temptations. Nowhere in the scripture is it said that a Christian life would be an easy life. And Christians all over the world try, especially in America, to uh, still be the same as everybody else, and they struggle with that, and they're defeated with that. But here, uh, they, they want the pride, they want the pomp, they, they want the praise. But humility has to be a part of our daily life. We can serve God with humility. We can call uh, unto salvation. We're called unto it and we get saved. And, and that should humble us that God would call us. We must be humble in our approach to others when we're a witness and we're trying to live for God. Our culture has a lot of pride but does not accept those with pride. Did you hear that? Our American culture is known for its pride but it does not accept people with pride. As a child of God, if you're full of pride and you're proud of your job and proud of your accomplishments and proud of whatever you have, which, by the way, is just temporal, then you'll not be a good witness for the cause of Christ. You'll have to be humble. So I believe this message is about how to be a Christian in a culturally unfit day. It's going to take, on the Christian's part, Separation, it's going to take humility. Uh, working for the cause or uh, being a witness is another thing we could consider. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 verse 21 says, Making you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in, in his sight, through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. You say, what is that? That's being that witness. 
and allowing God to work in you. And our text said, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it, it, it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? He gives an indication here that we have an obligation and a responsibility to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. And in that, uh, when Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever, we, we, we need to make sure what we do and how we witness brings him the glory. And so often, that's not the case. Because we live in such an age and such a culture where man expects praise, man expects to be lifted up. And if nobody's lifting him up, nobody's patting him on the back, he'll be patting himself on the back and telling you what a good guy he is, what a good gal he is. How good they can do this, how good they can do that, and they'll default back to something that they've done uh, back in the past, whether it be spiritual or not, and they'll capitalize on that and make sure you know how great they've been. You say, what is that? That's pride. That's not humility. One of the things I see missing today in Christianity across the board as a pastor of many years and a preacher of many years and an evangelist that's traveled from church to church, uh, I see pride. And, and it's not just in the pews, it's in the pulpits all across America. Men so proud of the fact that they're there and they're doing it. Listen, listen if we're going to be the right kind of witness, we'll have to have humility. Humility is missing and therefore our witness is affected. Our witness is not based on thus saith the Lord. It's based on charisma and how great I am and you need to listen to me or intimidation or some other factor. And it's ungodly and uncalled for. That's why if we should see a convert, they never materialize. Say why? Wasn't one through the word of God. They was one through your uh, charisma or whatever. Let me say this. Never wasting God's time. Uh, if our text be true, yet if any man suffer as a Christian... Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. I would say, always redeem the time for God. We get this misconstrued sometimes because we feel like redeeming the time is just staying busy all the time when it really doesn't mean that at all. To redeem the time means to be about the things of God. And some of those things may simply be just being still and knowing that he is God taking the time off you need to properly study and prepare as a leader in the church or a pastor or whoever you are to be prepared for what you need to say and do. Say, what is this? That's true redeeming the time, being prepared for the ministry that God has called you to. So often we're so busy with everything else. We run here, we run there, we chase over to this place and chase over here and we neglect the very job that God has called us to do and that's to put out and teach and preach the word of God. Paul said, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. And the day that we live in is an evil time. It's a cultural misfit time when everything's wrong, everything's upside down according to the word of God. In Colossians 4, 5, he says, walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time. So often uh, it's not. Now this will help you if you're trying to live the Christian life. If you're not trying to live the Christian life, uh, you're ready to tune me out already. But if you're going to really live the Christian life, you'll have to live a separated life, a humble life, a witnessing life. Could I say this? You'll need, you need to grow. I don't care where you're at in your life. I don't care how old you are, how long you've been saved, uh, how long you've preached. You always are going to want to grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. When you, when you refuse to grow in grace and grow in the knowledge of the Word of God, then you've hit a stale place in your life and your ministry. Uh, ever widening our love for Him you can always grow in the love of God. Ephesians 3.18, Paul said this, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and depth, and height, verse 19, and to know the love of Christ, which patheth knowledge, 
that we might be filled with all the fullness of God. I don't think any pastor, any preacher, any evangelist, any missionary, any teacher, anybody in the pew, any place, any businessman, any lay person, anybody has ever come to the full knowledge of the love of God. So we can always be growing and widening our love for Him. And it's, if you love God today, you're a cultural misfit. Amen. Because people don't love God. Uh, but as I stand here, one of the things I see Christians need and church members need is the love of God. Uh, now you hear this, well, we need more love for the church. If you have more love for God, the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll have more love for the church. And uh, we're in a pandemic time when uh, this COVID thing has uh, really hit a lot of folks, especially in our area, closed some churches, a lot of people doing just what I'm doing, uh, making videos so that we can reach out and do the job God called us to do. But we want to do it with love. And I realize the church will take a hit. And there'll be some folks that won't come back. And they'll just give in to the dictates of the world and the things of the world. And they won't be willing to be separate. They won't be willing to uh, grow in love and grace. And, and they'll never... Their, li their Christian life as they know it may be over by choice. Uh, their choice, not God's. So Paul, uh, Peter said, If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. So there are ways to glorify God. And he began, I begin, to, I've given you four or five things here. And for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it be, first begin at us, what shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? What's, what's their end going to be? Well, obviously, if we're not doing our job, we don't allow God to judge us at the house of God, then we'll never, we'll never up our game spiritually, so we'll reach less people. And those people may have been reached if we had done our job. Let me say this, never weary in well-doing. Never weary in well-doing. Uh, that's steadfastness. To be steadfast. One thing about things, trials and tribulations the church goes through, one thing about this uh, pandemic thing for Christianity is it definitely will shake out some dead wood. We've been talking about the storm that the churches go through, and uh, sometimes it's God's way to purge out uh, the old dross uh, to get rid of those that aren't going to try to make it. Uh, well, folks come to church for many different reasons, and they're not all godly. Uh, we see it in congregations across the land. But true Christianity wants to be steadfast. Paul uh, mentions this in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 13. But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. So we're not to wear out. We're to continue on, keep doing what we always do for the glory of God, Galatians 6 and verse 9, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Uh, there's a cornerstone verse of Scripture that always, when I talk on these things or speak on these things, that always comes to my mind, and it's the last verse of Scripture in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and it's one of those verses, it's kind of been a life verse for me, uh, over all these years. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So stay in the fight. Stay in the battle. Uh, keep going for the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care how many people are sick. I don't care how many schools they've shut down or how many churches have closed. Uh, that doesn't have anything to do with your service and your steadfastness for the Lord Jesus Christ. But I'm afraid to say it will probably affect a lot of folks that claim to be Christians. Well, I just don't think I'm going to do that anymore. I, I'm just going to get out. No, you need the church. Uh, if you didn't need the church, the church would be gone. But the world needs the church. Steadfastness in the child of God. Let me say lastly, always waiting for the shout. And I'm thinking about Peter 
Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. That was a man that knew God. That was a man that walked with God. That was a man that's saying, hey, uh, listen for the shout. I like what Paul said, wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So today, in the midst of all that's going on, we can still find comfort in the Word of God. In the midst that's going on, all the things that are going on in the world today, especially what we're going through here in our area, different areas churches are going through, there's still comfort to be had, and we can comfort one another with these words. He says, looking for that blessed hope in Titus 2.13, and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, Uh, You say, what are you doing? As a Christian, I have a hope with expectations greater than what I find in the world. Our culture doesn't give much hope. But this book, this Bible, gives us a greater hope. Uh, I like what he said in Revelations. John said this in verse 20 of chapter 22. Surely I come quickly, even so come. Lord Jesus. Yep, we're listening for the shout, waiting for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I find that these words are very comforting and they should comfort the church. Could I encourage you to be steadfast? Could I encourage you to live a separated life for the cause of God? Could I encourage you to be willing to be a little different now that you're saved and headed for glory? Be a good witness Learn how to live in a culturally unfit age, and that's the age that we live in. It's very possible, according to Peter, 1 Peter chapter 4. Thank you for listening this morning. I trust that the message will be a blessing to your heart and uh, you be attentive to your Christian life and do your part as a good Christian. And when your church is available, you be a part of that assembly. Uh, you do your part as a child of God. Shall we pray? Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you for a chance to preach your word and teach your word. And I ask God that you'd suit a blessing to each one that hears it. In Jesus' name I pray and ask it. Amen.